everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Shauna, if you're new here, welcome. Thank you for joining me and watching this video. So today I'm gonna to take you through my most recent library slash other book haul. So I haven't done one of these in a very long time and obviously working in a library, I get to see all the good stuff come in and I cannot help myself. So I actually went on like a whole spree and found so many good books. A lot of them are new. No, not a lot. I won't say a lot. They're newish to me. So uh, it's something that I wanted to share with you guys because and just sharing the excitement. So let's just get started. All right. So starting right off the bat, we're going to jump into it. So the first one I got, I actually got this a while ago, but I because I have such a longer deadline to return these books, I've had this one for quite a while and just have not taken the time to sit down and read it yet, but it's okay. I'm gonna include it in this haul, so hopefully that'll motivate me to actually read this book. So the first one we have is uh, Stranger in the Woods by Michael Finkel. So from what I remember of this book, because obviously it doesn't have a dust jacket or you know any summary in here, uh, I had to Google it to find out what it was about. Uh, this is about, from what I remember, uh, it's a nonfiction book, but it is, or maybe it's part fiction, but it's based on a true story about a man who decides to go out into the, does he go out into the woods? I should have done my research before starting this video. A man lives in the woods. That's all I know, and he tries to make it on his own. Uh, without any resources or anything. So he hunts his own food, he makes his own shelters, all of that kind of stuff. So uh, yeah, actually I think it is a man, like it's a grown man, it's not a boy who grew up there. The Extraordinary Story of the Last True Hermit. So you can only imagine what this guy is probably doing. Yeah, so it shows you, uh, yeah, it shows you a little map of the pond, I guess that he's at and you know, I guess where he was staying. Um, and then we also have here um, his camp set up. So I guess everything that he has and how he survives. So yeah, it's pretty interesting. Um, and I'm excited to read this one. Like I said, I've had it for quite a while, but you know, the, I've had a lot of these books for a while and I, I continue to check out library books. So it's, it's all good, it's fine. All right, so this next one is called All We Ever Wanted by Emily Giffen. So this one is actually, um, I don't think it's fairly new. It doesn't seem new. Uh, this one, yeah, 2018. So it's not new, but again, new to me because it sounded interesting and I wanted to pick it up. So this actually is a book about um, a woman who is married and has a child and is living like middle class kind of lifestyle. Um, and I think it's her daughter, their son. Their son gets accepted to Princeton, and then there's a, another person, another character who is a single dad who has a daughter who also gets accepted to Princeton, and he is very overprotective of her. Um, and apparently, there is a photograph that gets leaked uh, from Princeton. Don't know what it is. Don't know who's in it or what it's about. All we know is that it brings all of these three characters together. So the mom of the uh, like prestigious fam or like the middle class family, uh, the single dad, and then his daughter. So it brings them all together in a very unusual way, apparently. Uh, but it sounded interesting to me. I've really been into a lot of these academia kind of set on college campus types of books lately. Um, so this is something that I was like, oh, this sounds pretty intriguing. Let me pick it up. All right. So this next book I got is called The Stationery Shop by Marjan Kamali. So this one I believe is new. Uh, this is a newer book that was brought into the library. So of course I got first dibs of it. No, it's not. I stand corrected. This came out in 2019. I apologize. So this book is about, um, it's set in Tehran in 1953. So there's a political upheaval in this town uh, that happens around that time in actual history as far as I'm aware. And there's a girl who goes into the stationery shop and it's kind of like a bookshop and he's got all these uh, inks and you know, different, all kinds of cutesy little uh, quirky things that he sells. So 
she always goes there and she's one of this older man uh, who owns the shop. She's one of his favorite customers and playing matchmaker, this shop owner, he decides to introduce her to his other favorite customer and be like a little matchmaker there and put these two together and they start to fall in love in this little stationary shop. They both come there uh, for a reprieve from their families and from their everyday lives. And on like months later, on the eve of their wedding, uh, because of all this political upheaval that's happening in this town, there is um, uh, like a rebellion or a coup that breaks out and the, the man never shows up to meet her, to marry her. So they never get married uh, and she decides to move on with her life after a long, long time. Uh, it takes her all the way to America, to going to school and to meeting someone else, to falling in love and getting married. And we are now 60 years in the future and a chance encounter puts these two back together and she gets to ask him all these questions of why did you leave? Where did you go? Where have you been all this time? You know, I was in love with you. All of the questions that of course I'm sure all of us have. So this sounded so cute, uh, very emotional at the same time. Um, I imagine I will be feeling all of the feels in this book, but it's something that also sounded really cutesy and very, uh, I guess atmospheric because I love all these things that are set in like bookshops and quill shops and just little cutesy quirky places. So this sounded right up my alley and I'm really excited to dive into this one. This next one you probably have heard about and I did just check and yes, it came out this year. So this one is a brand new one uh, and it's new to the library as well, obviously, because it just came out this year. So that is The Paris Apartment by Lucy Foley. So I really wanted to read this. I read her other book. It was okay. Oh God, what was the name of it? Um, the one that's set in Ireland and it's a wedding and uh, The Guest List. Yes, read The Guest List. It was good. I liked her writing style, but was a little underwhelmed by the story itself. But I've heard good things about this one and there's been a lot of hype for it. So I'm willing to give it another shot. But this one sounded great too, because it is about this girl who uh, decides to uh, leave everything behind essentially and move to Paris with her, her half brother. It's her half brother, correct? Yes, she needs a fresh start. She's broken alone and she's just left her job under less than ideal circumstances. So her half brother, Ben, uh, didn't sound thrilled when she asked if she could crash with him for a bit uh, in, in his Paris apartment, he lives in Paris. So she decides to go there and he lets her come to stay with him. But when she shows up, he's not there. And it's a very nice apartment, uh, very so nice that she's questioning how he can afford such a place on his own. So he's not there when she shows up and the longer he stays missing, the more and more worried she gets. So she's trying to ask questions and figure out, but I guess the neighbors are not as friendly. Uh, nobody wants to really help her figure this out and it seems like they're hiding something. So this one obviously very different from the other books that I have here. I feel like I have an eclectic haul this time, uh, but this one is more of a mystery thriller kind of book uh, is what I'm gathering from it. Um, but I'm willing to give it a shot and it's set in Paris, so who can go wrong with that? Uh, and I'm excited to check this one out. Okay, this one, the summary is not that long, so I'm just going to read it to you. And this one I am particularly excited about because I absolutely loved and adored this author's other book that I read. So it's Under the Whispering Door by T.J. Clune. I love the house in the cerulean sea it's so good it's so heartwarming and so charming and i love it so much so i was so excited when he came out with this book um so i'm just gonna read you the summary because he just has a way with words that i can't i cannot mimic so uh when a reaper comes to collect wallace from his own funeral wallace begins to suspect he might be dead and when hugo the owner of a peculiar tea shop promises to help him cross over wallace decides he's definitely dead but even in death, he's not ready to abandon the life he barely lived. So when Wallace is given one week to cross over, he sets about living a lifetime in seven days. Hilarious, haunting, and kind, Under the Whispering Door is an uplifting story about a life spent at the office and death spent building a home. It just sounds so charming and so cutesy. And so TJ Klum, I cannot wait to read this one. Oh, I'm so excited. This is probably going to be at the top of all these books of like, I'm reading you next because ah, I love his work. 
Okay, so this is the last book that I got from the library. I do have other books to talk about in this haul, but this is the last one that I've checked out from the library that I wanted to share with you guys. And in all fairness, I will go ahead and say, I have already read this book, but I wanted to haul it because I got it at the same time as I got all the other books. So this is Book of Night by Holly Black. So this has been a very, very much anticipated read of a lot of people. I will start off saying I have read only like one thing of Holly Black. I have not read the Cool Prince series yet. I know I need to read it. That is on my list. I It's on my TBR. Don't worry. Uh, but I read her other stuff, like her early, early stuff that doesn't have great reviews, but it's about fairies and such. Uh, so this one sounded interesting and this is her debut adult novel so i wanted to give it a try because the concept sounded so cool so it's about a girl that we follow um in this world it's a um urban fantasy so it's set in i believe massachusetts i want to say i could be wrong uh they don't really talk about where they're at too much but and it's set in this it's set in our world. Uh, it's like I like I said. I think it's Massachusetts. I want to say, but she. It's this world where it's this newly discovered kind of magic. Newly discovered, as in the last like maybe ten to twenty years. It's kind of like come about. Apparently, these people have always existed in history, and they kind of explain that a little bit as far as you know why they were hidden and why are they coming out now and why is it becoming such a big thing and all this kind of stuff. They talk about it briefly in this. So it's uh, this magic that exists uh, where your shadows hold magic. So basically you can have a quickened shadow from what I'm gathering of it. And this shadow can help you perform magic. Now your shadows can also be cut off from you and you can be shadowless. So, but not everybody who has a shadow has magic, of course. Like, it's just people who, <laughs> it's just people who know how to use this magic. So I will go in saying that, okay, I won't give a review of this so far. I'll just say that I really enjoyed it. That's basically giving it a review. I'm, I'm kind of giving that away now, but who cares? Cause this is whatever, I, whatever video I want to make of it. So. It was good. I enjoyed the story and I enjoyed the magic. I thought the concept was so cool and so different. It's something that's not been done and something that I know kind of gets on people's nerves sometimes and it gets on mine once in a while uh, if I'm not prepared for it. Um, when you just jump in, like fantasy writers especially, jump into a world and expect you to know the rules and the laws of this magical world and how things function and how things work. So I know a lot of writers that do this and it can be frustrating at times, but I kind of enjoy, most of the time, I will say that, I kind of enjoy trying to figure it out. Sometimes it can be frustrating and I understand completely why most people don't like that style, but I kind of enjoyed it with this. But I will say that there are still a lot of questions I have about how this magic system works. So it does leave you a little bit in the dark on some things and a little bit confused on a lot of things. But I think overall, I thought the story was cool. It had twists and turns that I did not see coming. And as far as I'm aware, the way that she's ended this, there better be a sequel because there just needs to be. So uh, I did enjoy this one though. I will say that. I know a lot of people were disappointed by it. Um, and maybe it's because I haven't read the Cruel Prince series, or is it the Folk of Air trilogy is what it's called? Anyways, The Cruel Prince and then the other two books that go in that series. I have not read those yet. And I think a lot of people were trying to compare this to those to that series. And the, from what I know of that series, it's nothing like this. Do not expect anything similar to that from what I've gathered. Again, I haven't read that series. I don't know. Don't hold me to it. All right, so like I said, that was the end of the library haul. So now I'm gonna jump into the haul that I got from other people. With these books, they were all gifted to me. So uh, these books that I'm gonna talk to you about now were came from Natasha. Thanks, Natasha. 
Uh, they, she's a part, or she was a part of Book of the Month. Um, I think she's still kind of doing it. Um, I don't know, but you can easily skip packages, so she might just be doing that for a little while. Uh, but she had some books that she had read, uh, didn't particularly love, like she liked them, but not enough to keep them because she doesn't have a lot of space. And um, I don't know why I take books. I mean, clearly I have a ton of space. I don't, I really don't, I need to stop, which is why I got a, lot, a ton of library books. I digress. So she decided to give these to me. I asked for them as well because I said, whatever you're getting rid of, you know, I would like to read it, at least give it a shot and then you could take it back and sell them or do whatever you want with them. And she, again, she liked these books but not enough for her to keep. She has to justify it enough for her to keep it. So I will start with that. So this next book that, the, one of the first ones she gave me is called Somebody's Daughter, A Memoir by Ashley C. Ford. So this is a nonfiction and this is about a girl who grows up without her dad and her dad is in prison and she doesn't know why. She, nobody has ever told her why he's ended up in prison. She has all these questions. She ends up starting to date as she gets a little bit older and starts dating a guy who her mother hates and ends up getting assaulted by him. Uh, she keeps a secret from her family and is trying to cope with that and deal with that. And then she starts to learn what her dad did to end up in prison. And so it is about, I loved this last paragraph of this summary though. So it steps into the world of growing up a poor black girl in Indiana with a family fragmented by incarceration and explores how isolating and complex such a childhood can be. As Ashley battles her body and her environment, she embarks on a powerful journey to find the threads between who she is and what she was born into and the complicated familial love that often binds them. So I thought that was really beautiful and I'm really interested in reading this and it's not too too big, it's, it's pretty short. So I feel like I can knock this out pretty quickly. But it sounded, I have been reading, uh, if you haven't been able to tell, I've been reading a lot more nonfiction this year and a little bit kind of last year. Uh, it's just something that's really started to sit with me and hit me a little bit harder than some fiction books. So I like switching it up every now and then and, and trying new things. So that's what we're going to do. <laughs> All right. The next book in this haul, this one I will preface with saying that I have not heard amazing things. I've heard things, <laughs> but not necessarily great things about this next book. But I am always willing to give things a shot. I don't just read books based off of the fact that people hated it. I want to give books a shot if it sounds interesting to me because everybody's style is different. Everybody's taste is different. And if you don't love a book, that's okay. And I love it. That's fine. Vice versa. If I hate a book, but you love it, it's totally fine. We all are entitled to our own opinion. That's why there are so many freaking books out there. So I wanted to give it a shot, uh, but it's called This Close to Okay by Lisa Cross Smith. So this one is about a uh, man who's about to jump off of a bridge and a woman is driving by in the middle of the night and, or not, I don't think it's the middle of the night, but she's driving by, it's raining. She jumps out of her car to try to save him and just invites him to have a cup of coffee with her. So he agrees. They go to have a cup of coffee and they start to get to know each other. Uh, and she's hesitant to let him know that she's actually a therapist. Like this is her day job. This is what she does. She listens to people's problems and she helps them solve them. So little does he know though, that she has a lot of things that she needs to work out at the same time. So it's told through a dual perspective and it, it just sounds like a lot of mind things going on. So I really wanted to read it. And again, I've heard a lot of things about it. I've heard a lot of chatter, not great things, not horrible things. So I just wanted to try. I wanted to see what it was all about. So I'm going to give it a shot. All right. So I know y'all have heard of this one because it's everywhere. Uh, the People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry. No, I have not read this yet, but I'm ready to do it. I finally have it in my hands. I can actually read it. So this one, if you don't already know, because it, like I said, it's everywhere. Uh, this one is about uh, two friends who get together for a vacation. Um, I guess you find out how they meet and everything. Uh, their names are Poppy and Alex. And she's a wild child. He wears khakis is what it says. Um, she has an insatiable wanderlust. He prefers to stay at home with a book. So they became best friends. They've lived apart for so long, like long distance friendship basically. And they have agreed, they've taken one glorious week of a vacation together every year. So until two years ago when they ruined everything, they haven't spoken since. 
doesn't say what happened, just know something ruined it and they have not gone on vacation. They haven't talked to each other since then. So she decides uh, she wants to fix this after a several years, I guess, of silence. She wants to fix this. She wants to be friends again and decides she needs to convince him to do this. One last vacation, one week together. Let's make it all right. Let's lay everything on the table and clear the air as it were. And he agrees. So she realizes, okay, I have one week to fix this. So that's what she sets out to do. And again, I've heard things about this book. Mostly good things, I will say that. Um, so I am excited to read this one because again, it's been on my TDR for a really long time. So I'm ready to give this a shot. All right, so this last book that I got in this haul, I actually got from one of Tony's cousins. Um, I actually read one of her books last year. She's an independently published author and it was really good, that last book that I read. So I actually happened to get to meet her in person a couple weeks ago and she's lovely, lovely person. And I love getting to chat with her about all things books and her books and her writing and what she's doing now and what she's gonna do next. And she was gracious enough to gift to me uh, one of her books that was already published. So this one I think was out first uh, before the book that I read. Um, they're not a series, but I think they have characters that overlap is what she was telling me. So it's called Getting Him by Nikki J. And it's about this man. I feel like I should just read this. I feel like I should just read the back. Should I? Yes, okay. I have had more women in my life than a standard calculator could count. Some for business, some for pleasure, and some to piss off their husbands because I hated their damn guts. Her, I just wanted for me. She wasn't your average, hit it from the back, and not call tomorrow. No, she had class, standards, and morals. The kind of crap men ran away from, not me. At the end of the day, she was a woman with needs, and I was the man for the job. So it goes on to talk a little bit more um, about what he's doing and stuff, but we're following this man, obviously, through his journey. He's found this woman. Obviously, it's a romance, if you couldn't gather that from the summary on the back. But uh, he decides to get revenge because he's found something out about this woman. So I'm really excited to read this. From what she told me of what her friends have said and family members and stuff, uh, people that she's worked with who know her um, have all like called her at like six in the morning being like, when are you going to write another book about this character? Because we need him. So apparently everyone loves him and loves this character. So I'm really fascinated to see how she plays this because he sounds really toxic, <laughs> but I'm really excited because I love reading about toxic men. It It's just so interesting and fascinating to me. So I am so excited to read this and I'm so, so happy for her gifting to the gifting this to me. Thank you, Nikki, if you are watching. All right, so that's it for this book haul on this video, uh, this whole video. I can't speak today, it's fine. Um, thank you again for watching this video. I would really love it if you stuck around and hit the subscribe button. You can hit the bell icon to be notified anytime that I do post videos. And if you loved this video, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up because it really does help out my channel. I really, really appreciate it. I am trying to do more on this channel and be more consistent, but you know, live in life, try and, Anyways, you know the deal, you know the spiel. I give it all the time. And sometimes I'm just full of crap, but I really do love making these videos and I really hope to continue doing this. So I really appreciate you guys sticking around. For those of you who have been here from the beginning, thank you so much. Um, and I guess that's it. So I will see you guys in another video very soon. Bye.